Hello, uh, my name is Michael Wehar. I'm broadcasting here from Swarthmore College's WSRN 91.5 FM. Uh, if at any point you would like to give us a call, our phone number is 610-690-5700. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in to listen to us today. Um, we have Irvind. Uh, we're really excited to have him as our special guest. Um, so Irvind, could you introduce yourself real quick? Certainly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a graduate mathematics uh, uh, student and a mathematician of, uh, who arrived in the U.S. recently. I graduated from Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey, and I'm rather excited to be here. Thank you so much for that great introduction. Um, so um, the first thing I was going to ask is... Um, you, you said you're going to pursue these graduate studies. Are, are you starting a PhD program or a master's degree? Or are you able to tell us a little bit about that? Certainly. I completed my master's with an intention to, well, with an intent actually to discovering if I wanted to pursue a PhD in the field. And certainly that uh, the experience has affirmed my uh, decision to continue with academics. In, in I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about. Um, how you how you got where you are today um where did you go to undergraduate school and um what did you study there did you study the same thing or if you could tell us a little bit about that yeah my journey to the stage was actually a fair bit more convoluted although not as disconnected as one might be led to believe i started off with my undergrad studying computer science as indeed uh, a lot of people do with the intention to uh, pursue a high-paying career, for instance. But as I was progressing through, I had a couple of problems with sticking to the core of computer science rather than the applied mathematics side. One is that the field is already saturated. And the uh, second and most important thing, I found myself more drawn to the theoretical aspect of it. So digging down deep further, it is nothing but discrete mathematics, which in, a, in and of itself is an uh, application of uh, pure mathematics. So there I was running towards scientific computing and applied mathematics, which is what I ended up doing as my master's at Rutgers. I, uh, my bachelor's was from an Indian university in the state of Tamil Nadu called Shastra. Uh, I worked for a couple of years, was a bit dissatisfied, moved to a research position at the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore, where I worked for a structural chemist. The, the underlying component of all this is mathematics. While I did work for a chemist, my work was purely mathematical. So. Uh, you can think of it that way. And that's funny because most of the software is, uh, was written decades ago. So I ended up working with Fortran for, uh, for the most part, which is not that commonly encountered these days. Wow, that's really interesting. Yeah. I've never worked with Fortran at all. And um, I've worked with a lot of different programming languages yeah. as a computer scientist. And um, I've heard of it. I've read its Wikipedia article, um, but I've never actually written code um, I think there's even a, quite a bit of jump just from starting to learn a language to actually implementing something right. for a real application. So that's really neat how you did that. Well, uh, la but ultimately, language is a language. So you know one of them, you can construct types for all of them. And as long as you're well versed in the foundations, which is C, which is well, what I was educated in, Fortran isn't too difficult, except it's a little bit more formally typed than C. So um, I know you already mentioned a bit about this, but um, what made you interested in mathematics? Is that something you were always interested in? And if you can say anything about just your personal experience and how you, you got to um, this, this passion I can see that you have today. Well, my uh, interest in mathematics stems from, I would say, my incredulity and the improbability of our uh, existence, really. Uh, when you think about it, the likelihood of us existing here at this time and point as the life forms that we do, higher intelligent life forms and on this planet, in the universe, it just seems ridiculous. But here we are. Uh, as I went further into the field, I realized that mathematics and the scientific method in general is just an extrapolation of the philosophy of empiricism. I was once a rationalist. I quickly discarded that. As, as, uh, as an approach for fools and madmen because nothing in this world that's worth anything can be proven with a beyond reasonable doubt. So all we can do is test them to a certain extent, accept that it works, and then proceed forwards. And 
Well, I can't say I agree with everything you said, but I think it's really interesting to hear your philosophy behind this. Oh, or to put it another way, I think mathematics is the language of God. It is universal, and it describes the universe in, 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 in uh, improbable and outrageous, but uh, still spectacular and stellar ways. I think that's really interesting, seeing that kind of connection to your beliefs and maybe even spiritual or religious beliefs mm. to uh, something some people might think of as scientific or philosophical and um, so it's really neat to hear that connection okay so thank you for telling us about how you how you kind of got there to this passion it with mathematics um, so what something else I wanted to ask you about what specifically about mathematics um, do you like or are, are there certain things um, you gravitate to or certain aspects of it that really stand out to you uh, if you're able to say anything about that, that would that would be great as well. Fascinating in its uh, description, but ultimately, uh, the thing that draws me most to it is that I, I find, find that the more I knew, the less I understood about the fields, and that that really didn't sit right with me. So I had to learn even more. Yeah, this has been really amazing interviewing Irvind um, about his passion for mathematics and how he got to where he is now pursuing. His PhD, um, but we're going to take a quick break, if that's okay, um, and we're going to come back and continue this conversation. Again, uh, this is Swarthmore College's WSRN 91.5 FM, uh, and thank you so much for listening, and we'll resume in just a few moments. Uh, again, we have this special guest, Irvind. Um, we've been really excited to ask him about his experience pursuing mathematics and um, now he's on his new adventure, exploring, uh, pursuing graduate school, uh, going for a PhD. Um, I wanted to ask you a few more questions. Um, so what would you, what would be your perfect career, um, once you finish up your PhD? I know you're just kind of at, at the beginning of stages of parts of it, but, um, yeah, what do you see yourself doing, um, afterwards? Mostly tackling optimization theory at uh, one of the several uh, massive labs around the United States, and they're working on some caucus of problems. For instance, uh, uh, at uh, Lawrence Livermore's National Laboratory, working on uh, improving ways of um, parallelization across uh, tensor transformation you know, for uh, optimized gradient descent, which is what the problem it is that I'm working on right now at a larger scale. So this is an enormous and massive field, and it excites me to no end, so that's probably where I'm headed. Well, I think that's really awesome to hear how what you're pursuing right now, you hope to continue to be pursuing that and continuing to advance um, that field um, as you're continuing this PhD and when you finish it and afterwards. Not everyone's so lucky to really have something they're so committed to, and it can take people a long time. So I think that's really awesome to hear. I wanted to ask you a few more questions. What advice would you give to undergraduate students here, say at Swarthmore College where we're broadcasting, um, if they want to pursue um, graduate study? Um, I know you did your master's and first, and um, any advice or suggestions you could give to them about how to get in or what they should do to prepare. All right. There's really two questions that you, any prospective graduate student needs to ask him or herself. The first is, do you actually really want to do graduate school at all in the first place? Which is uh, a rather important question that most people don't consider asking themselves in the first place. It's, it's, it's an enormous and uh, rather challenging hurdle to overcome. And the result at the end of it, if you're not planning to continue in research, is probably not worth it. So that's the first and most important question of all. But if you think you are you're cut out for research and that you're more interested in dealing with the all-consuming obscurities of a field rather than just living a comfortable and uh, rich life, then I would say be prepared for adversity. Do not fear the obstacles that will inevitably present themselves to you. 
it, it, is, it is difficult. And while you may take some solace in the fact that everyone else who has tread this path has probably encountered the same or similar problems before, uh, you will still have to contend with them. And this can be anything from long hours to frustrating uh, iterations over research that looks like it should work, but then doesn't. Or, for instance, answering why something does work when you don't understand why it does work in the first place. So it's, 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 it's really silly in its uh, deliberations. But at, at the end of it, when you have that one precise moment of clarity, when you've achieved uh, a beautiful and elegant solution to a problem that's, that appears uh, absurd in its definition, then you know you have achieved something truly extraordinary because the adrenaline rush from that makes all the years of hard work worth it, at least in my opinion. I think that's really amazing uh, what you just said. Um, I mean, there is struggle and there are challenges and you have to overcome those and have that commitment to keep going. Um, but in the end, there can be some real beauty and um, some really just awesome results and um so so you think if i understand right you think it's worth it to get to that um that success in the end it's sort of a self-looping question in uh, in fact i would say because if you've had the resolve and you had the determination to make it all the way to the end you will certainly think it is worth it uh if if you don't think it's worth it uh, most people wouldn't go through all that uh uh, the significant adversity just to end up in a place where they think they were worse off than they were 10 years ago, for instance. So uh, the vast majority of candidates, as far as I'm aware, for a PhD, for instance, do end up uh, being satisfied with the choices that they made because at the end of it, you got to learn an immense amount of, or gra ga gra gather an immense amount of knowledge that you would have otherwise not been aware of. And it just improves perspective and the world is never a worse place for more perspective. Yeah. Well, um, when I did my PhD, I, I, I was very passionate about the subject matter I was pursuing, and I, uh, I had challenges, and I did have these uh, successes every, every now and then where maybe I got a paper published or um, had an opportunity to share some results, um, and even just making some small results. Um, and um, to me, just the whole kind of life cycle of pursuing, trying to solve problems and um, learn more and advance a field of study, um, that whole life cycle was rewarding. Uh, I enjoyed the whole kind of process of it and all the people I met along the way and all of the... Um, different experiences and learning that I did along that path. Um, so uh, everyone has, I guess, a unique path, but I think um, uh, I think we both have some similarities in our perspectives, and it's, um, it's been really amazing to hear this from you, Irvind. Um, do you have any last thoughts or last piece of, pieces of advice to college students today um, before we... Uh, wrap up this broadcast? Mm, I suppose the only bit of, bit of advice that I would have is while it is certainly true that you should believe in yourself and believe what you're doing matters, uh, a bit of humility never hurt anyone. So consider that almost everyone throughout history, including yourself, and you will be part of history, has been wrong, al almost exclusively wrong. So don't be afraid of being wrong is what I would say, because that's just a part of the process. Yeah. I couldn't have said it better myself. Humility is very important, and it's a perfect way to end, end the show for today. So, Irvin, thank you so much for being here. Thank again, you. It's my pleasure. Great. And uh, again, this is Swarthmore College's WSRN 91.5 FM, and um, I'm Michael Wehar, and we're signing off for today. Thank you.